Back in Revelation 5, we were introduced to a new song, a song sung to the Lamb, and in it is referenced those purchased by the blood of the Lamb from every tribe and language and people and nation. Then in chapter 7, John witnesses a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. The word order is, is shifted some, but the connection seems intentional enough. Now, we discovered language again in Revelation 11, but this time it's, it's not referencing those being saved, but rather those rejoicing in the seeming demise of the saved. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. I give them what's about to transpire. Why, why three and a half days? Why not three days or two days or, or one? Verse 11 tells us, but after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. In other words, they were raised. But why that specific time frame? Back in, in verse three, we were told they prophesied for 1260 days, or we've discussed at length, they prophesied for three and a half years. They were dead and left unburied and mocked for three and a half days. And it strikes me that that the contrast is intended to emphasize the brevity and the relative insignificance of the beast's victory. The language of verse 11 is, is particularly evocative of Ezekiel's vision in Ezekiel chapter 37. Now, just as the breath of life entered these witnesses and they, they stood to their feet, so God's breath, his spirit, restores and renews these people in in Ezekiel 37, it enters them such that they once again stand to their feet. Now, the NIV states that, that those who saw this were struck with terror. But that doesn't necessitate a bad thing, as we might be led to assume. Rather, in John's gospel, in the recounting of Jesus kind of walking on water, we get a similar description of, of the disciples. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. It's the same word. The disciples beheld Jesus and feared him. Now, fear doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Proverbs 9 famously puts it, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, a little later in, in Revelation 11, just a few verses uh, further down, we're told there's a reward ahead for those who fear God's name. Now, here's what I'm suggesting. There's a change happening. Something different than what we find in, in like chapter 6, where those were hiding in caves, calling to the mountains, fall on them. This is this different. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a, a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. Do you see what just happened? It's easy to focus on the ascension imagery or the great earthquake, but what happens to the survivors? And those who were God's enemies rejoicing in the death of the witnesses, they gave glory to the God of heaven. Do you get it? They didn't repent at the locusts with, the, with power and stingers like scorpions. The horse and rider numbered twice 10,000 times 10,000. The beast overcomes the witnesses. They are murdered and humiliated. God restores them. And many repent. This is why I mentioned several weeks ago that the beast is, is said to overcome. His victory is actually his own defeat. And does that sound familiar to you? This should be a lesson to us Christians today is so many grasp for power. Victory has always been greatest out of, of that which was our surest defeat. 
We don't have to like it. But this is how the kingdom works. Have a great week.